Dear respected teachers and my fellow classmates, Assalamu alaikum. I am Sadan Yasser, ID 17-06-102, and this is Group 1, presenting to you our group project for Triple E304, titled Five-Way Intersection Traffic and Pedestrian Light System Using Digital Logic Setup. Joining me are my fellow lab partners of Group 1, of ID 17-06-99, 100, 101, 102 myself, and 109. Now my friend uh, Bishoy will explain uh, our problem concept. Thank you, yes, sir. I am Bishoy Pal, ID109, and I'll be explaining some of the concepts of this problem. For the five-way intersection, we were given the project side of Polaris intersection. So we have tried to show a top view of what the intersection looks like. As you can see from this figure, we have tried to create a small replica of the roads. In the bottom left corner, we can see our EC campus in the west side Polaris. In this side, we have our great main compass. We have Solimala Hall and Eden College on the top and our Sohravarti Hall in the south side. Before we move on to the various scenarios of red, green, and yellow lights that we would have to encounter for each of the roads, we want to quickly take the time to highlight this particular road over here, the Takashi Road. Now, the reason we want to highlight this is because if we take a closer look here, we can observe that the Takashi Temple Road is actually narrower than the rest of the road. So this was a major concern for us when we started to construct this project. From the very first place, we wanted to ensure that all the roads have equal priority so that there would not be any uneven flow of traffic in any of the lanes. To achieve this objective, we had to prioritize and keep certain lanes in green light much longer than the others so there would not be any congestions. Let's take a look at the individual component that we have used to complete our project. One of the most important thing in this project was generating pulse signal that we need to run the ease of the individual ICs. For that, we have used the pi pi timer signal and then as you can see from the slide, the individual connection of pi 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 is a timer given on the left side. Inside of the hardware aspect, we can see our small pi pi pipe IC in the middle. We have also used a variable register. The reason we have used variable is that this resistance is actually controlling the time period of the pulses that are being created. Now, the next thing that we needed is decade counter. For that, we have used the 4017, which is a Johnson counter. In this counter, we can see that the counter and the connection are given such that the pipe 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 timer clock pulses is given to the 14th pin. We can also see that we have used nine of the 10 output of the decay counter. The last output has been fed back to the master's reset pin such that the counter resets after the ninth output. Thank you, Moimun. I am Jobai Rahmet, ID 17060099. Here we can see an overview of our software part of our project. On the top, we can see 555 timer. In the middle, we have our 4017 ticket counter. In the bottom side, we can see our countdown timer. In the right side, we see a series of diodes being connected together to sort of recreate the various combinations and scenarios that we will have to simulate to get the correct lighting for individual roads. Now let us look at the hardware and software part side by side. At first, let's look at the 555 timer at which, which is at the top side of our breadboard. We then have our ticket counter at the bottom part of breadboard. Then we have two ICs that are used for counting red signal in the middle part. The ICs are <coughs> strategically playing such that there would be minimum distance took over between each of the individual ICs themselves. For the countdown timer, we have used down counter for 74169 and the dec uh, decoder 7447. 74169 down counts only when the input at the first pin is low. We have used nine pin, which is at the input end. We have connected one of the output of a decade counter into this pin through a NOT gate. Now this is important for simulating the behavior where it will only down count from six after signal is read. On the right, we have our 7447 decoder. The decoder basically taking BCD code as input and converting it for seven segment display. Now my fellow mate Shamo will continue from here. Thank you and good morning everyone. I am Shojan Dutto Shammo, ID 1706101. The diode we saw in the software part of this site is basically here. Now, here we have a map of various LEDs that we have used in our projects. Apart from the traffic signal, each of the five roads that we considered in our project, we have also implemented a pedestrian light for guiding them proper direction. As we can see from the slides, apart from the LEDs, we also see a series of MPN transistors around each of the LEDs. Now, these LEDs Sorry. Now, this leads to one of the biggest problems that we face during the mid phase of our project. A lot of the LEDs in many scenarios was not light up evenly and sometimes was not light up at all. Reason behind this was that the outputs from each of these ICs are giving such a low amount of current and such a low amount of voltage that the basic 2.2 volt 
for each of the LEDs is need to light up was can't be provided. So to solve this problem, what we did is took a NPN transistor and used it as switch with another voltage source. For powering up each of the ICs, we have used 5 volt DC supply, but when it came to LED themselves, we took a, we took a 12 volt supply separately and we have connected them to collector of our NPN transistor. The output of each of ICs is to base of the transistor side and in the emitter side, we have connected our individual LEDs. In this way, we solved the voltage shortage that in this way, we have solved the voltage shortage problem that we were encountered in the first case. This is basically a software overview of our project. Now we will move specifically to the hardware side. My friend, Mr. Sadman Yasser will describe the rest of the project. Now let's take a look at the hardware aspect of our project. For we have decided to use a series of breadboards as a canvas for not just our digital circuit, but also as a way to model our five-way intersection. We have connected individual LEDs of each of the rows in such a way in the breadboard that the modeling of the entire uh, five-way intersection, it becomes a lot easier. In the coming slides, we will see some of the working procedures of how we got to the final product. We want to quickly mention over here as that due to the constraint of the recent pandemic and the lockdowns, uh, we, had, we decided to shift to a more uh, smaller scale of a model to at least be able to get the fundamentals right to correctly predict the behavior a five intersection model should look like uh, instead of the more uh, appealing aesthetics. But we tried our best and this is the finished product. And in the coming slides, we will see how our final uh, project behaves in different scenarios and how it operates under uh, different circumstances. So this is our end product. Uh, we, we used, as you can see in this slide, uh, in the bottom left, bottom right corner, we, have, we can see our variable DC voltage. Uh, the four individual ICs that we used to properly implement the circuits, uh, uh, the series of diodes and MOSFETs that we have used, and a little bit of resistance in the way. And in the top, you can see our uh, small scale model of a five-way intersection with the Takashiri road being the narrow lane that we see over there. Um, and we can also see a, a countdown timer on the top Left, top left corner, which is basically counting down for the green signal uh, for the uh, road that just that is just uh, just uh, underneath the uh, countdown timer. So uh, let's have a closer look at the uh, model itself to better understand if the lights are behaving uh, correctly or not. Okay, as we can see in this clip. Uh, as uh, uh, we try to press uh, the switch, uh, we basically simulate the behavior that a 555 TMR was giving us, which was basically pulses. But this time we are trying to manually control each of the pulse. Uh, and we can also see uh, from the model above that it is behaving exactly as we predicted. Uh, our countdown timer is only working when we try to press each of the buttons. And um, so, uh, it, so the purpose of the whole uh, button being there is fulfilled. Thank you everyone for giving us the time to present our project. Uh, we welcome any questions uh, that related to our project. And we want to take the time to thank our respected course teachers and everyone uh, who have helped us uh, in various stages of uh, trying to make this project work. Thank you.